Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the solution this time is for the 1 million bank balance puzzle. So what you're looking at there is exactly what I've got on my uh, laptop here. And I have a lot of help with Matt Parker's Math Puzzles and Deanna helps me put together the solution presentation that you see in these videos. And she went above and beyond the Call of Duty this time and she made a graphic for Parker Pounds. There you go. And that's because in the original puzzle video I was waving around uh, my uh, maths dollars, which to be fair I have badly uh, photoshopped a picture of my face onto. And so uh, Deanna correctly thought it would be hilarious to make a Parker Pound graphic. So there you are. Anyway, this is the puzzle where you have to have some kind of bank balance on day one. You then change the bank balance on day two. The bank keeps adding your previous balances together and you need to hit exactly 1 million currencies, pounds, dollars, whatever, after as many days as possible. And we've got some great solutions that people sent in and a lot of people went about trying to solve it as a uh, Diophantine equation, or Fantine. Um, and that's where you set up some equations, but you know they have to be integers, and that gives you extra information to be able to solve them. So if you put in, uh, more graphics, if you put in X Parker Pounds, or your unit of currency of choice on day one, and then you put in Y units on day two, and then your balance on day two would be X plus Y, on day three, it's 2x plus y, 3x plus 2y, and you carry this all the way down. And this sort of thing has been used for a very long time to analyze Fibonacci-like sequences, which is exactly what this is. It's a Fibonacci sequence, but you've got to work out what you start with rather than knowing what you start with and having to work uh, forwards to see where you end up. In this case, you know that down the line, somewhere you're gonna get a sum which is 1 million, and you've got to see how far ahead you can put that. And you can see here, the options are kind of around day 19, day 20. And day 19 absolutely works. And we got a whole load of solutions in for day 19, which if you start with 144 units, you go in, that's your first deposit. And then the next day you put in 154, which makes your balance 298. Then that sequence will carry on. You add two to get the next one. Eventually you will have 1 million units on day 19. If you put in that solution, congratulations, that is correct. You get all the points for being right and you get whatever speed points uh, that you get if you're in the first one thousand valid entries. We have diminishing speed points for them and it turns out we had 1,912 of those entries. So well done if you were one of those 1,912 people. Don't panic if you weren't. Important thing is you gave it a go. So uh, let's have a quick tour of what some of those 1,912 people did. So Eric here used the open source uh, Python visualization library that uh, Grant from uh, of 3Blue one brown fame uh, put together, and uh, using uh, that, they've animated their solution in a video. I thought that was kind of a fun. They get a mention for that. Eric here, once they realized it was Fibonacci, made the spiral of the amounts. That's quite nice. Good work, Eric. Matthew did a spreadsheet. A lot of spreadsheets, of course. I thought we'd put in Matthews because they've sent in a spreadsheet every single time. This week, uh, another spreadsheet I want to flag up. This is Karen. So Karen put together her spreadsheet, but not satisfied with that, she then solved it using a spreadsheet on her Texas Instruments TI-84 device. And so she also sent in some screen grabs of her doing it on a calculator. So spreadsheets on a calculator. I mean, there's two of my favorite things together as they often are. Um, we also got a bunch of code, so Raf, we picked your code to show that um, it all worked very nicely. Good work, thank you everyone who sent in code. And um, where's, here we go. This is the combination of the last two. So Selena here used a calculator to run code to find the optimal solution. And so that's fantastic. So there you go. So there, as you can see, there's a solution scrolling through. So I just thought that was worth an extra bonus mention. So uh, running code, oh, there we go. Okay, you can, we don't have to watch. Uh, you know what, let's, oh, there it is, one million. Hey, so Selena.
great work. And so there you go. And so, as always, fantastic range of people who sent in solutions. But there's more. There was actually a slightly better solution. So we gave full points to everyone who got it on day 19. Some people got it on day 20, one extra day. And the reason that I still count now 19 as being correct is there's a slight ambiguity here because to get it on day 20, you have to go in on the second day and take out 10 pounds. So you put in 154 on the first day, you then go in the second day and you make a uh, withdrawal. You take out 10 pounds. So your balance never goes negative, but you don't make a positive deposit. You make a negative deposit on the second day. And I was careful. I didn't hint at this too hard in the original video, but I did say at the very beginning, you go in on the second day and you change your balance like uh, making a deposit, let's say. And so uh, this, okay, you didn't have to do this to get the full points, but if you did do this, you do get the full points. And you know what? If you did this, we'll give you an extra 100 bonus points for being clever. There you go. Um, so you bent the rules slightly, but technically within the parameters we did originally set up. So I don't want anyone getting annoyed that they considered doing this and they didn't do it because they thought it wouldn't count. Um, the people who did do it, I just want to reward them. So I have no complaints. I get to decide these people get an extra 100 points because I think that's quite clever. And this sequence does eventually get you down to 1 million one day later. So that's great. Um, and 206 people did that. So about 10%, give or take, uh, compared to the people who put in the um, other more uh, orthodox solution, let's say, uh, and one such person is uh, Per here. They um, used a spreadsheet, they wrote it up very nicely, they sent it in, that's some fantastic work. Uh, good job. Now, what if you have a bank which allows a negative balance? And this is where it gets very interesting, and part of what I was curious about when I set the puzzle was how many people would keep rolling the Fibonacci style sequence back further and further, because here you go, here's, um, here's the sequence you need, and it starts counting 154, 144, 298, so on, all the way up. But then if you go back another one, you can see here, you actually go negative 10. Because if you went in on the first day, borrowed 10 pounds, then you went on the second day, and you put in 164 pounds, that would then give you a balance of 154, and that would give you an even longer sequence. And um, some people did do that, 11 people did that. If you keep rolling it further back, there's no limit. Like, Fibonacci sequences go in both directions. You get a different ratio. So if you go forward, you get the golden ratio, which a lot of people used in their solutions to reverse engineer it. Great work. If you go backwards, you get the negative inverse of the golden ratio. If you divide one term by the next, we're going um, left to right. And 179 people put in a solution in that direction. So we also gave them some bonus points for being creative, and uh, we set the form up, so when you put them in on the website, it would take negative values. So there you go, well done, 179 people um, who went off in that direction. And uh, again, that's, you know, about 10%-ish compared to people who did the main uh, the mainstream solution. And you think, well, hang on, who did go in that direction? Well, uh, she here, they went in that direction, they rolled back and they put in some ridiculous amounts of money. So a big old deposit, what's that? Thousand million billion, 426 and a bit trillion pounds in on the first day. And the second day they took out 689 trillion and change um, pounds. Great work there. Although you could go bigger. Those are the biggest values you can get, I think, if you do it in Excel. I think that's where that caps out. Uh, Rob here, um, this is the presentation they sent in, which uh, Deanna's put in here for me. Uh, she's very pleased. This is a presentation in a presentation. Great work. Uh, skip to the end. They actually worked it out for day uh, 365, which gives you some huge values. And I'll be honest, they don't go into our form. So Oliver, who does the database for us and the form as well as helping with the puzzles and the solutions, uh, Oliver was like, you know, we're going to have to have some kind of limit on this. Uh, and well, I said, you know what? Let's just pick 
a, a reasonable limit and go with it. Let's not try to try and be clever to make it take bigger and bigger numbers. And so we do have to put a cap. I was very clear in the video that the bank refuses to clarify any of the rules, which was also a hint that there's some more ridiculous stuff that you can do. And I ran with that because we had the same policy. We don't clarify any of the rules. So we figured the limit that we have on the form, that's just the limit that the bank has on their system. So there is gonna be some limit, and if you did eventually max it out, oh my goodness, thousand million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. So these are the biggest numbers you could put in our form. You've gotta borrow just over 4.7 quadrillion units on the first day. You have gotta come back in and deposit 7.6 quadrillion units on uh, the second day, that's a lot of money. I mean, you're bankrolling, I mean, that's a big, like the percentage return, given you're only making a million on this, not a good return, if I'm being honest. But hey, technically, that's the solution. So I think we're gonna give extra speed points. So we're gonna have an additional round of, I think we're gonna do 500 scaled down speed points for any, for the first people who got in this, because this is the maxed out this is the optimal solution that could fit in our form. And given we didn't clarify any of the rules, but this technically would work if you put it into our form and it would double check it with you. It shows you this is what you've put in. This is the sequence you're going for before you hit cement, um, submit. Then yeah, so there you are. So we're gonna give bonus uh, 500 for the first person who did this, 499 for the second, on top of any additional speed points that you may have got and the 100 bonus points for anyone who used negative values. Because this is Matt Parker's Mass Puzzles. Well, I'm Matt Parker, I pick the rules. Don't complain, it's fun. Okay, anyway, uh, did anyone do that? Yes, 72 people. So well done, 72 people maxed out that. I'm very impressed. Uh, so there you are, um, that's it. I thought there's a few other honorable mentions we'll put in. Sean here wrote the code to work out the number of ways of hitting uh, the 1 million on different days, which is kind of fun, and there's loads of ways you can do it. Uh, if you want to do it on the fourth day and all the way down, as I said, there are easy ways to do it quicker. I like the fact that they explored the options, and that's just for the plain vanilla uh, orthodox approach where there's no negatives at all in the solution. Michael here, I'm a sucker for a good 3D graphic, did a great 3D graphic showing uh, you've got your first deposit, second deposit on the, um, surface at the bottom there, and then how many days it takes. And so you can see the optimal solution hidden over in the corner there. And um, Blake, I just like because they had a spreadsheet which you could put in the target, and then it will tell you the way to do that and how close it is to the golden ratio. So you got the difference from um, golden ratio over on the side there. And I just love the fact that you can um, mess around with different solutions. Uh, so there you are. Um, oh, target, or oh, back to a million. Okay, so. I thought that was great, good work, um, Blake. And that's it, that's it for the solutions. Thank you so much for everyone who joined in. Sorry this was a bit of a weird one, where there was kind of the main puzzle, but then there was all sorts of weird ways you could stretch it by using negative values. This is actually because I really like ways you can extend Fibonacci style sequences, and I talked a bit about negative values, where it alternates positive and negative when you go backwards on the Fibonacci sequence in a book I wrote years ago. And I've been dwelling on it again recently. So I think next week, I might put out a video on my main channel just about ways to extend the Fibonacci sequence. There's some really interesting stuff. So you can keep an eye out for that. And finally, for those of you who watch these videos right to the end, end of the video crew, love it. Um, I've actually got a few of these cards left. So I auctioned off a whole bunch of these for charity. They're all signed um, by me. And um, there you go. And on the back for each one, it comes with a post-it note that I've also signed saying which videos, uh, sorry, that's probably not a focus, is it? Uh, which videos it's appeared in. And I sold a whole bunch of these on eBay for charity for Water Aid a couple of weeks ago, except um, eBay limited how many listings I could have at once. And so there were six of these left over that I couldn't put on. So if anyone wanted to get one of these and missed out last time, I'm gonna chuck the last six up. They'll be on there for a couple of days only and then I'll post them out. All money goes to WaterAid who are doing some great work providing um, hygiene and sanitation facilities where they needed most in this time of uh, more virus than normal. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you with another puzzle next week.